In the early 2000s, a global climate crisis emerged from humankind's disregard for the Earth and its natural systems. Scientists warned of an apocalypse the likes of which could eradicate human existence. The blaming began, with the leaders of many powerful nations pointing fingers at each other. Eventually, war erupted, and deadly nuclear salvos fired from the biggest superpowers ravaged much of the Earth, destroying and irradiating large portions of its surface. Certain major cities survived, and from the ashes rose again. The survivors did what they could, utilizing the resources of a few very wealthy corporations to combat the climate crisis. For almost a century, civilization has survived, hobbled together with corporate governance and expanded to the few sections of the globe still viable for sustaining human life. Antarctica, once an inhospitable frozen tundra, has become one such bastion for human life. Colonized by a Scottish arms corporation called Militech, Pilatus Antarctica is a thriving metropolis of the future. Last time, on Roll Warriors, the associates rolled into the House of Blue Lotus Petals in hopes of getting a clue about Mikaze's whereabouts. Instead, Mikaze was waiting for them and leapt down to the dance floor to confront her sister and rival, Suifangji. Abel, Saul, and Kander might just be there for backup, but when they spot Oslo in the crowd, things get a little bit more complicated. This battle is just heating up, so let's jump back into it. What did just happen was uh, Soifangji got tired of playing with, you know, unarmed strikes and uh, pulled a gun on Maikaze and shot her. <laughs> and then every thug in the place pulled a piece out. So how many thugs would that be? Um, approximately nine. Oh, boy. OK, it's a bad time to leave the grenades at home. That's for sure. And. And after they pull guns out, all of the like patrons, because this is a this is a seedy criminal bar. All of the patrons also pull guns and point them at other people, like random people. It's like you know, one table will pull guns on the table sitting across from them. Uh, it's just like everyone's got guns pulled. No one has fired anything yet. It's a Pilates standoff. That's about to go down. Uh, who do we shoot? Can you describe the physical scene uh, beyond just the people? Like, what's the what's the setting at the moment? Is there any sort of tactical places to hide, or anything going on in the ceiling, or is this a two floor situation? Like, what's yeah, the yeah? So, so it is a. It's definitely a two floor situation. Although the second floor is more of a of a balcony or overhang. Um, so the first floor has in the center of it a dance floor where Mike Kaze and, and Soifangji are currently dancing. Um, around that floor, on so two sides of it, um, like opposite sides, are some booths where people can sit uh, and they kind of, they, you know, they're little alcoves basically uh at the far end of the room is the bar people can order drinks and the opposite side of the bar is the, the exit and there's a couple of bathrooms uh on that side as well then on like the left hand side of uh the bar is like a is like a winding staircase that goes up to the second floor where you know, there's a balcony that looks over the dance floor, and um, there are more uh, 
alcoves on three sides uh, with, you know, VIP booths. And uh, Abel, if I'm not mistaken, you are on the second floor, uh, kind of like on the far on the far side, uh, because that's where my Kaze's b- private booth was. Um, and you swiped a like a little data card that was sitting on the table, uh, and pretended to be a waitress and and walked away from that. Um, Saul, you and Candor are downstairs on the first floor um, uh, in the left corner just before the staircase where Oslo's private booth is and and Oslo's people. And then, uh, yeah, that's that's essentially it. There's there's probably two thugs on the first floor or on the second floor and there are... um, seven more on the first floor like a bouncer who has kind of come in from the outside uh and then just some some servers who also are security uh at this point when we see soyfungi pull the gun like abel what what are you doing (laughs) because saul is going to instantly like look to you like, the fuck is going on? I'm still carrying these empty glasses, right? Yeah, you've got a tray in your hand, uh, and it's got glasses on it. Because some of some of um, Maikaze's entourage accepted your disguise and are have, have passed some of their empty drinks to you. Yeah. Uh, I... Hmm. And so, are you near... You're nearby me? Yeah, relatively. I mean, like, I'm assuming you just kind of came down from the, the scene that was painted, you kind of just came down the stairs. Yeah, I'll just I'll just shout out to Saul. Uh Henri, there is a spill up in the VIP area. I need your help. I, I'm not good with these chemicals. Um <clears throat> oh, yes, I will help out. <clears throat> Saul makes the shittiest fucking accent possible. With it definitely does not sound good. Wow. Bitch. <laughs> yeah, well, there's just this, this fighting in the back. Oh, God. Yeah, because my plan right now is to go back upstairs and into the VIP room and see if there's any, like, fucking major weaponry in that area that, like, people left sitting by their seats when they got up to watch the the big show. Oh, yeah, and definitely we should try to, like, if able, just shoot, I don't know, take out some people while we're up there. If Yes, I'm able. I, there's, I'm able, but I don't know. I only have a hand. <laughs> You're too that, funny. Is, that, that made me so uncomfortable listening to that just now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think we're all feeling that. Nice. Um, That's R, also, R in the chat. Also, Oslo will kind of lean into you, Saul, while Abel is relaying that all that and, and say, you know, if you guys need if you guys need help out of here, I, I my guys will cover us. Uh, your your guys? Yeah, yeah. These these dudes here, and there's like you know a mixture of of people, uh, all armed, who look like they're ready for a a rumpus. Saul's gonna think to himself, how the fuck did this guy get a crew like assembled in the what month since you know the 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 casino job went down but then he's just not gonna think about it too much and he'll say uh like thank you stranger um i gotta go take care of a cleanup but yeah if you could kind of like i don't know um make a path for us to get out of here then yeah that'd be really cool all right and so he will turn to the uh, the others with him and quickly speak. Um, it's like a mixture of street slang and Spanish. And then they all kind of nod and like garnish their weapons and, and prepare to kind of forge a path. Um, all right, so we're in we're back in turn order now. Um, so I think you shot somebody, so they, they already did their turn. Um, uh, Kandor is going to, 
uh, bum a not a gun, but like a taser off of uh, one of one of Oslo's crewmates, uh, just so that she's got she's got something to defend herself if need be, and kind of like duck in with them. And uh, Abel, it's your go. All right, I'm running upstairs and looking for high-powered weaponry, carrying my tray and just still muttering under my breath. Why? Why they're drinking fucking Mai Tais on a Tuesday? I don't understand. I don't get it. There's so much sugar in the carpet. Um, okay. Yeah, give me a... Just be perspe- perception, probably. Perception roll. Roll to nine. All right, hold on. Uh, bu- 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 general perception or human perception? Like, if I were a thug, where would I leave my grenade launcher? Or do I see a grenade launcher? Like, which which um, way are we more leaning? I, I'll actually... You could make a case for streetwise, um, because I think that Abel would recognize at least some of, like, the colors and affectations of some of the patrons here. And so you might be able to suss out where the best weapons might be had. Well, my persuasion and my human perception are both better than my streetwise, so I was going for those guys. But you, yeah, you let me know which one you want me to go with. Um, I think e- it's going to either be general perception or streetwise. All right, I'll just go general perception for 21. Okay, with a 21... um. There is a one of like the fo- the paper doors ha- has been like left slightly ajar um, on one of these uh, alcoves that's on the far wall upstairs, uh, and out of the just like corner of your eye as you're de- kind of darting past it, uh, you see the like headstock of a uh, assault weapon of some kind. All right, I'm going to grab it with the intent of handing it to Saul as soon as he gets up by me. Okay, so you open the door and you grab this thing. It looks like some sort of uh, assault rifle, but you aren't familiar with the brand. Okay, yeah, I'm handing it off to Saul as soon as he's within range. Um, Or if I have a chance to meet him on the balcony with it, I'll just hand, hand it to him. Um, if I can, and be like, yeah, they got they got my tie on this thing too. What the? F- well, actually, that looks pretty cool. All right, uh, Saul, it's your turn. Um, Saul will first check to see what kind of weapon it is. If you want to give me like a weapon smith or whatever, just do a quick r- r- little nobody roll there. All right, um, uh, do, 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 do. that would be a fifteen altogether. This is like a it's a boutique brand. Um, they're not, it's not generally available in Pilatus, uh, but you know that this particular model has, um, seeker rounds. Oh, this is like a, oh man, this is, uh, this is like a smoochie. It's like, you see the big, like, S over here? Like, you know, with the little, like, three lines up top and the three lines on the bottom and, like, that, those lines that connect them in the middle? You never, you never seen like a smoochie? No. Are you supposed to? No. Oh man, it's like. So I'll just fucking use it, man. All right. <laughs> so I'll just. He's gonna. I guess. First, see to. Are there any of the thugs up top? Are have they taken shots yet, or are they just like getting ready to shoot? There are there are two um on like the the door side up on the second floor balcony kind of both pointing their their guns down um right now in the my kaze and and soifangji are in the middle of like close quarters combat mm. uh so they don't want to they don't want to open fire and risk hitting um the owner That's uh right. so so they're kind of waiting for a good shot but yeah they both have their guns trained in, in soifangji's general direction uh yeah, so we'll see if he can line up as many of them as possible, and he'll uh he'll let loose. All right, go ahead and give me an attack roll with plus two. Ooh, oh, that's pretty good. All right, it looks like it's gonna be a seventeen altogether because I'm not trained in um heavy weapon. It, would this be 
heavy weapons? Uh, yeah. It's gonna be like a it's gonna be like a heavy assault rifle. Okay. Yeah. So I I'm trained in submachine guns, but not heavy weapons. So that would be. Uh, I got, I rolled an eight plus two is 10. And then I think I'm just using, I'm just using pure dexterity off of that, which then means it'll be a 17. Yep. Or sorry, 18. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. That'll, that'll, uh, hit, uh, with one round each. Ooh. Um, go ahead and roll damage. Okay. So what's the damage for the submission or for the assault rifle? Uh, five D six. Ooh. 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 All right, so that looks like a uh, four four. Oh, okay, that's ten ten one. So twenty one. Okay, uh, you see sh- two bullets. Uh, you kind of you squeeze the trigger once. Two bullets go sailing out of the gun and split in opposite directions and hit uh, both of the guys on the balcony. Oh fuck! This is so cool. Oh, I've never played with these like fucking secret rounds. Oh fuck yeah! Um, I'm assuming you said twenty one. You said twenty one damage. Yeah. Okay. I rolled two sixes, two fours, and one one. So if the one wasn't there, it'd be a little bit better. But um, after that, are the thugs still standing? Um, they have both. They've both like hit the opposite wall. Uh, they they look like they're alive, uh, but they're kind of like on their on their butts and and like clutching their sides. I'm assuming the rest of the people on the balcony have, like, taken notice. Yeah. All right. Um, I guess Saul will just do whatever he can to kind of, like, slip back into the room that Abel pulled this gun out of. Or this alcove. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll let you know. So this is on the, this is on the far wall, mm-hmm. um, perpendicular to the other sides where people are, and the... The sliding door for this alcove is made of paper. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, um, I think uh, if that's the case, then Saul will probably try to duck behind like the actual balcony railing. Then I guess I, if there's any sort of cover that's pertinent from that, like if it's concrete versus glass, which it probably is a glass railing. So <sighs> I don't know. Saul will just move to the nearest cover then. Okay. Yeah. It's it, it's not necessarily going to be like you know abl- anything that's going to ablate rounds but it it will make you a little harder to see yeah and that's all Saul's really going for okay all right so we're going to have um a couple of uh my Kaze's, like entourage uh pull guns and they are going to uh shoot in your and Abel's direction okay one of them that's going to miss uh, the other one will hit, um, so it's gonna go for it's gonna hit Abel. She's not currently ducked behind cover. Well, fuck. Uh, that's just gonna be six damage. All right. Oh shit, they're they're pretty zesty, aren't they, Abel? So hold on, so six damage. I have eleven points of stopping power on my light so, armor jack. Yeah, so it doesn't hurt you. Cool. All right, uh, it's my Kaze's turn, and she is going to say, "Well, dear sister, if this is the way you'll want to have it, we'll have it this way." And pulls uh, her pistol from her side, and then Sophie says, "All I've ever wanted was for you to just be a sister, but I see that this will never come to pass." You may think that I am a mechanical doll that does not know the reason for my existence, but just as I have steeled my body, I have steeled my resolve. And to ensure that I continue to exist as myself, my cause, I'm going to destroy you! And she goes, whatever, bitch. (laughs) 14 damage. Ooh, okay. Um, I've taken two hits already, right? Uh, melee hits. So they'd ignore your armor. If I remember correctly, my armor was... Should be 12. All right, so two damage two damage will get through and your armor will blade down to 11. Damn, does she, does she have like a hand cannon or some shit? Uh, it, is a, it is a heavy pistol. Ooh, okay. And um, 
you see so <laughs> Soifeng G delivers this this line of prose and Maikaze just like like clicks her teeth and just you know says whatever bitch and and pulls her her gun up and and just shoots you in like your side <sighs> okay the Soifeng dramatically fly back that's up to you okay Maikaze is char- char- well- charging you either way so Okay, uh, Sofengi flies back and stands up, uh, and then she says, You dare challenge me, you defective net-running drunk! Do you want to be ripped apart like before? And she says, The only one whose junk is you. We were gonna, we're gonna throw you out with the trash when Sahara's done with you. And, uh, it's your turn. Cool. Alright, Sofengi starts turn by saying, Too bad you won't be around to see it. And um, pulls out her microwaver again. Um, how close is Mikaze to Sofengi at this point? Uh, she's like within, I mean, she's charging you right now. So like very close range. Okay, cool. Um, I have my microwaver. Um, I also have my kukris. All right, as she's coming, um, I'm going to try to counter her with one of my spiked heels aimed directly to her face as she's coming. Okay. Go ahead and, yeah, roll an attack, and I will roll a defense. 6 plus 12, 18. Uh, yeah, she only rolled a 16. Ah, ho. So, that's 11. 11 damage, cool. You see her try to, she sees the heel come up, she tries to faint. Uh, away and like gets a meaty slice out of her shoulder um, as it narrowly avoids her face Uh, but she's kind of like she's kind of like rolled off to the right Ooh, okay nice and that Sofungi rips through her sister's shoulder and she will look at her and say as I've never had a shoulder to cry on I don't see why you need one and uh, I guess like I'm allowed to move too, right? Uh, yeah. Okay, cool. And then I move uh, back a little bit. All right. She will attempt to. She'll attempt to like uh, counter you, um, moving with an attack of her own. That's a. Ooh, that's a ten. Okay. Uh, that's a thirty-one. Thirty-one to hit. Ooh. Okay. So I have to roll. A th- yeah, you have to roll a d10. Add your evasion skill. And then, uh, and dexterity. 23 plus 8 is 31. Ooh, wait, Uh, if if it's the same, does she hit me? Yeah, I think it goes to the attacker. Ooh, so close. Yeah, I mean, she rolled a critical, so for for you to actually come within, you know, (laughs) that close to to avoiding the blow is, is pretty impressive. And then she's going to make... A melee attack using an extra dice. Uh, 12, 12 damage um, as her, like, claw uh, catches your catches your arm. Ooh. And does that ignore armor as well, if it's melee? That ignores half of your armor. So okay. it would go, yeah, whatever half your armor is. Uh, okay. My armor's at 11 right now, so I guess half of that is what six. five and a half does that run up to six okay yeah we'd round it up to six okay all right Ooh, where did she slice me uh r- across your arm like your forearm okay uh so Fungi jumps back holding her arm and says she looks at it she doesn't even say anything she just looks at her with burning red eyes she goes what cat got your tongue Mm. All right. Um, it is uh, going to be Candor's turn, but before Candor goes, a couple of thugs, now that Soifangji has separated herself, are going to shoot at her. Oh, Soifangji getting shot at? Ooh. Yep. yep. Ooh, okay. All right, let's go. That's definitely going to hit. That's a nine damage, which will probably, well, which won't breach your armor. The next guy will hit 
Uh, that's only going to be a three, so that one ablate your armor. And then one more dude. Rolled another critical. Uh, eight. So yeah, that there's just shots ring out from the club, and you like three shots uh, bounce off of your off of your uh, skin, your shark skin. Ooh, okay, so if you we- just stands there. Oh, go ahead. I was gonna say, do we see slash hear the uh, bullets like bounce off and fly out into like I don't know bystanders and or just like random club shit? It's like breaking glass. Yeah. And stuff. Well, as soon as these shots, as soon as these shots go go out, it's very obvious to see. Um, and everyone else in the bar is gonna use that as a kind of starting gun, uh, to just start blowing each other's brains out. <laughs> lit <laughs> so so there's like it's we're we're in full on like war zone now everyone is shooting everyone uh and you guys are just gonna have to like you know dodge bullets and and fire from kind of every direction In the midst of the chaos, as the bullets bounce off of so- Soifunji, um, she just slow- slowly turns and looks at the minions with a crooked, deranged smile. And this is where her cyber psychosis is starting to kick in. And she looks at them and says, how pathetic. And then she lets out this, like, like gut-wrenching laugh. Like, <laughs> how amusing. Try your best to entertain me. As she's, like, standing there, like, laughing at the minions. Uh, okay. And with with that, it's Kander's turn, who looks on in, in uh, kind of horror, and, uh, it's, it's a confusing, it's a confusing look on her face, because she's just like, what is she doing? <laughs> um... But shakes that off after a second and sneaks up behind one of the thugs that uh, just shot at Soifang Ji and will attempt to tase him and fails miserably. So she she like lights the taser just a little too quickly um, and he, he turns around amidst the chaos, sees a teenager trying to uh, zap him and is going to like... Uh, try to try to grab the taser and, and take it out of her hands and they're just gonna they're just gonna wrestle for it that's that'll that'll be resolved in a later turn all right uh bu- 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 abel all right so how many guys do we have still standing active shooting at um us uh well of the of the bar security seven okay. um, and what's the rest of the crowd doing the rest of the crowd is busy killing each other, but every now and then, um, the if you know, if you cross paths with someone, they might try to kill you too. My Kaze's uh, entourage still, like one of them, the one that shot you, is still kind of like actively aiming at you. Okay, and is are there any like doors downstairs or like what I'm gonna try to do? is create a stampede environment with the crowd. So is there any place that would make sense for Abel to logically direct people by yelling, they keep the drugs in that room that she can point to with hopes of like the crowd charging across Mikaze and um, Sufanji. Um, I'm, I'm betting that Su Funji will be able to get out of this in some acrobatic fashion, but I'm trying to get the crowd to basically like break up the fight. Um, th- definitely. Well, I think other than the two bathroom doors, the only other like service door is behind the bar. Um, but yeah, I mean, you could definitely you could definitely send people charging at the bar. Um, man, do I want to do that? 
Would right. Abley morally do that? Where and where's um uh, like the people that I care about right now? Um like where are my people? Are they at the bar? Uh Saul's next to you. Um Candor is is downstairs to the left of the bar in a in an alcove. Uh well actually she's she's currently wrestling with a guy uh right right um at the base of the staircase. Oslo and his people are are taking cover in their alcove and shooting at people. And you know where Soifeng G is. <laughs> um okay, I'm going to shout over the banister. They called in the rippers. Everybody run. Um before ducking for cover with the hope of uh, persuading the crowd to start charging for exits. Okay, is this, I'm thinking this is going to be your uh, class skill or your, your, like your main skill, which is credibility. Is that your skill? Reputation? No, it's um it's whatever the like Saul has has a uh, jerry rig and the and Soyfine G has um their net running like interface. I'm mm-hmm. trying to find media. Or like can I roll for local expert to know who this crowd would most be afraid of? Um, you could do that. So, like, 18. What would, th- what would I know with an 18? Um, you would know that, uh, pff, probably the Rippers are a, a safe bet, um, but I think more more so than being afraid of the Rippers, everyone's kind of scared of Skeleton, whether they will admit it or not. Okay, well, I'll shout that then. They call in the Skeleton crew! Everybody run! Uh, all right. Uh, then I will give you a bonus. Yeah, plus plus four to uh, persuasion or fast talk or whatever you want. Flat twenty. Okay. Yeah, you say you say <laughs> send them in the skeleton crew. Everybody run and like people uh, stop firing at least most of them um like the thugs in the bar they don't give a shit um my Kaze's entourage don't seem affected or phased but most people are going to head for the nearest exit um some people run through the the dance floor uh so soifeng g if you want to make a like evasion roll <laughs> to not get trampled okay <clears throat> <laughs> okay, so Sarfo is just maniacally laughing as she makes her evasion roll. And I wrote a 9, 14 plus 9, 23. Okay. Um, yeah, I think you just kind of like activate your shark skin and take a take a leap back and gr- uh, grip the um, like one of the support rails as as people uh, push through. My Kaze is not so lucky. And um, she is actually, like, knocked to the ground uh, by a couple of fleeing people and takes some damage. Nice. All right, as Soifeng G clings to the wall, she just says, Don't die, sister dear. <laughs> Your death belongs to me. Okay. Uh, yeah, she's, like, she's like clamoring to get out of the, out of the crowd and uh, actually looks pretty, pretty banged up. Um... One, uh, two of the thugs are going to like push push their way through, uh, and and crowd her to kind of like keep people off. And then as soon as uh, the crowd disperses, the like now the bar is pretty much empty save for Oslo's crew, um, and uh, Mikaze's entourage, uh, who now start shooting at each other. And the uh, seven thugs, one of whom is wrestling with Candor, and two of whom are guarding Mikaze. And and when the car- crowd's all gone, Mikaze like 
one of them goes to goes to help her up and she smacks his hand away. She's like, no, fuck it. Get back. This isn't over between she and I. And and she'll stand up and like uh, flex her fingers, ext- re-extending her claws. Um, and her hair is like a, a, a matted mess now. Uh, it's it's like, you know, she she just looks dusted up and and the dress is torn a little bit. Uh, and she looks pretty fucking fuming. Uh, Saul. All right. Um, Saul's gonna hear all of this shit and see all of it, and he's definitely gonna like give a quick thumbs up to Abel, but also like a very concerned like, uh, uh, like the that old Swedish dude who's always in the memes. Um, and then yeah, I guess he'll just fire again at whatever crew is left sitting up top. Okay. Ooh, baby. That would be the entourage. Ooh, baby. Ooh, baby. That's a 10 on the first one. It's a 14 roll plus plus dexterity, right? So that would be a 21 to hit. And you added the plus two? Oh, uh, that's a 23 to hit. Okay. Uh, Since you rolled a a 10, make sure you add an extra dice to that damage roll. All right. So is that 66? Yep. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. That's... One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, that's 24. That's some medial rolls, but still 24 points of damage. Uh, Yeah, I mean, so two two bullets that you fire, I think, five rounds. Two bullets fly into the, um, into the, the two guards that you had down before, and just as they're about to get up, and then they, they don't move anymore. Um, the other three uh, bullets, like, pepper the entourage as they kind of all sc- scoot in different directions. And um, let's see. Uh, it's going to kill two of them. The one that was trained on Abel gets winged in the arm. Um, and she looks pretty, like, worse for wear, but uh, she still has one hand up. And she will fire back at... Uh, you saw. Oh shit! Sixteen. Um, that's gonna that's gonna miss. Nice. Uh, because you you are still ducked behind this cover, or you you came up to fire and then and then you ducked back down, mm. uh, pretty quickly. And uh, yeah, it just it goes through the glass like next to you. Dope. Not dope, but still like. Oh shit! Relative dope. <laughs> All right. It is uh my kaze who is going to um, uh, fucking bum rush Soifeng Ji again. Soifeng Ji's still clinging to the ceiling, right? You're not, like, you're not, like, very high up, so, you know, she can still, like, hit you. Uh, You just kind of got off the floor. Okay, cool. Uh, 25 to hit. Um, Dexterity's 28. All right. Uh, yeah, uh, I, I'm I'm wrong actually. <laughs> so so she, you know, you're you're holding on to the the wall here. Uh, see her coming and just kind of like move an, another step up on the wall, and she swipes at the into the air and is kind of like jumping to try to try to uh, reach you with her claws, and and is cursing at you in uh, Japanese. <laughs> Oh, look how angry you are. Look how angry you are. <laughs> I'm going to show you why I'm the best. And I'm going to show you why Mother tried to suppress me. Uh, and it's your turn, so go for it. Cool. All right. So I found G just like, like, ring level creepily drops to the floor and stands up, still, still smiling and laughing, and then she just stops for a second, stares at my cause, and just, like, charges at her as fast as she can. But but instead of using her spiked heels, she's just gonna pull out her two kukris and just, like, try to slash her wherever she can hit her. You making an attack roll? Yeah. Okay. Boop. Fifteen. Ah, she rolled a sixteen. Ew. So that means I missed. Yep. So she's, uh, she's still 
you know, able to fight enough to uh, duck out of the way of your kukris. Uh, and then you guys just go back at it. Um, <laughs> all right. Uh, it is uh, Kandor who is f- wrestling with this guy. Um, and she kicks him in the nuts. Uh, and he drops to his uh, his knees. And uh, then she tases him in his shoulder. Uh, and he falls over and then is going to kind of run and hide behind the, like the, where the bar loops around. Uh, so between there and the staircase, then, um, the two that were helping, uh, my cause up are both going to take shots at Swiffling G. That's a critical... That's going to be 8 damage, which doesn't do anything. Which is crazy, because he still fucking rolled a 10. <laughs> I just rolled shit on this D6s. The other one, 3 is 7. Yeah, they're not they're not hitting you. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so Fungi's still laughing maniacally. <laughs> so, my cause, any more useless peons for me to ignore? And uh, and then another two of the thugs drop from um, the entourage as uh, Oslo's crew takes them out. And then Oslo and, and his cronies are going to move from where they are, like, crouched, positioned. And one is going to stay uh, at the bar and watch and, like, keep uh, an eye on Kander. Uh, two are going to kind of move to the opposite wall and and hide behind like a support beam support beams and c- continue shooting at the thugs on the ground floor. Oslo and two others are going to go to the uh, door and stand on both sides of it and kind of like find you on the balcony and give you a thumbs up. Abel's also going to be confused about Oslo's apparently having a crew um and it's gonna roll with it at the moment but can actually she can i do a perception check on oslo's crew and how like like are they also in weird kimonos and look like they came out of their mom's basement (laughs) or are they like bona fide thugs like what's the situation they have a lot of tattoos um they all kind of have like um the the men have very short very styled like like buzzed and you know other design designs uh put into their hair uh and uh the the girls all like both there's two of them um have like very tight cornrows and they they seem to be of like um latin descent can I do a streetwise roll to see what these folks are about? Sure. Well, fuck. I'm confused. It's the it's the ladies that got me distracted. Um, because that's gonna be uh eleven. You have no idea who these cats are. I don't know, but they're hot though. Okay. Um, cool. I'm just gonna like look over and saw and be like, who is your friend? Huh? It is. It's your turn, Abel. Uh, okay. So let's see. Our girl's back behind the bar. Sufenji's getting her ass kicked, and Saul still has a mega weapon. And Oslo's folks are joining us right now. Anybody currently like on the way to fuck with Candor, or um, is she in danger? She anyway? is in danger in so far as. Uh, there are, there is at least one thug firing at the, the person that Oslo has guarding her. So stray bullets, you know, being a thing, she is technically under fire. And sufunji has got three folks on, on her right now? Yeah, my Kaze and two thugs. All right, I'm going to go ahead and just take a wild shot and, uh, aim at my Kaze with my shotgun, but I am going to aim for her head. Okay. So, what's the aim? It's ne- like negative, right? It's not really a thing. 
in this in this version, it's more of a narrative thing. So like you're oh, you okay. telling me that you're aiming for her head means that if you sh- succeed in hitting her, I'm describing her getting shot in the head. Okay. Um. Yeah, aiming for her head. Decent, decent. Nineteen. Uh, nineteen is not gonna hit at this range. Fuck. Okay. Yeah. Problem with shotguns is they be uh, one of those one of those close range weapons. Yeah, maybe. Uh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe it distracted some folks, and then I'm gonna duck, but duck back down under cover, like at least duck behind the railing a little bit. Yeah, it definitely like the the shot rang out and like the the shotgun shell kind of you know exploded near where Mikaze is uh, currently fighting Suifang G, and so that's gonna be enough to draw one of the attentions of the of one of these thugs uh, your direction. Cool. Great. Okay. Cool. Great. Saul. Yes. There are not any more of the of the entourage on the second floor, and you've killed both of the guards on the second floor. Oh boy. Um Well, if that's the case, then Saul will uh pop up and see kind of like similar stuff that uh Abel is looking for, just where everybody is, if Candor's safe, and see that there's one individual trying to shoot at Candor. And he'll be like, all right, time to be a good babysitter. And he's going to try to, like, just fucking unload the person aiming at Kander. Okay. Yeah, give me a, give me that roll plus two. Yep, 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 yep. I'm just trying to make sure that I got the right numbers in. That's an eight plus five would be just 13. That's, that's actually going to miss. Yeah, I, I figured. It was just too low of a shot. So I guess maybe, like... They were like way across from the bar. Um, what actually what actually happens is like you 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 fire off a a shot um, and you see like the uh, little alignment dial on the on the gun's like scope uh, has like taken a leap out of its out of its place. Oh man, fuck! And Saul will kind of like <laughs> duck back down and fiddle with it. Hey, it's your Game Master over here, Gavin. This is the part where I ask each of you just to send us a little bit of support. You can follow us on Twitter at Roll Warriors and send us a tweet or two. We'd be happy to hear from you. Secondly, we have a Patreon page if you have a little bit of extra money you want to share with us. It's only $5 a month to become an esteemed member, like Billy Young, Daniel Sittler, and James Beatty. This membership includes bonus episodes that you get to suggest. Say, for example, you want to hear us roleplay your friendly neighborhood insect people. We'll do it. Actually, that one sounds hard and possibly litigious, but I'd try it for you, my patrons. Just go to patreon.com slash roll underscore warriors to join the party. In case you haven't heard, we have a website, so you can get all the juicy deets on the cast and the characters. You can check it out at rollwarriorsadventures.weebly.com. Lastly, I'm excited to announce that between this episode air date and episode 41, the season one cast completed recording of the finale. While it will still take some time for the released episodes to catch up to the finale, this will allow for the new cast to get going on bigger and better things for the future of the podcast. There's a lot to look forward to on the horizon. Abel, who the fuck are those people? Dude, I don't know. I can't get a good read on them. How the fuck did he get a crew? Yeah, we don't even have a crew. Yeah, what the fuck is this? Oh my god. How is how and and I don't think those hands are from the hair. I I don't Oh man, I But he's still hanging out with with, with Mikaze? I, like I, I don't know. Maybe he just like came here because I, I don't think he would go back to the um you know I don't think you go back to the He's casino. Ever. I, I don't. This is just weird all around. Like, have you ever like I don't know talked like accidentally seen like an ex walking out in the city and they're just like totally different. It, is, are you saying that? No, it just feels like that. It's weird. Oh, sh- 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 let me fix the gun. Fuck. Valid. Valid.
It, yeah, Saul's just gonna like fiddle around with the scope <laughs> and try to fix everything. But that's all he's gonna do. Uh, it is uh, my Kaze's go, and uh, she is tired of playing with her claws and wants to uh, wants to shoot back at you again. Okay. Uh, definitely going to be a hit. Jesus Christ. These fucking low ass rolls. That's only five that's only five damage. It's not gonna do anything. <laughs> okay, what does it bounce off of Surf so fungi? Uh it bounces off of your like thigh. Okay. It looks like she was trying to trying to shoot out your leg. Alright, so fungi looks at her leg, looks at my cause. And screams just some random insult, like, <laughs> looks like your aim's off. Are you scared, sister? Are you scared of what's coming? She says, Sahara took all those emotions out of me. I can't be scared. Well, just wait until you see what I'm going to take out of you. That muscle, or that vein in her uh, forehead, it's visible from where you're standing, and she looks ticked. Um... So I find G, it's your turn. Cool. Alright, so Sorfungi, I guess she's like she's still in melee mode, so I guess she just wants to toy with my cause for a little longer. So um she still has her kukris and she's going to run towards she's going to run towards my cause. But what she's gonna do is she's gonna try to she's going to make it appear like she's coming at her with the kukri, but she's actually coming in um, with a heel slice. All right, so you'll be using martial arts instead of... Melee. Yeah. 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 My martial arts is... 12. Ah, I rolled a 10! Ooh, does I get... I mean, I get get to roll again? Okay. Yeah. Then you'll roll an extra damage dice. Okay, nice. All right, so I rolled a 6 the second time. So 12 plus 10 is 22, plus 6 is 28. Yeah, she rolled 16, so you're definitely going to hit her. Which I think makes sense, because she's, she's looking to block your kukri attack. Yeah, ooh, okay. I'm just glad the faint pulled off. Okay. So that's 5, 5, and I get to roll one more? Yep. 4. Okay, 14. Okay. So, just before you charge, um, one of the one of the thugs uh, turns to Mikaze and says, "Madam, we need to get you out of here. The battle's turning wrong." And she says, "No, only one of us is walking out of here alive." And then she sees your your kukri come in, uh, puts her arm up to to uh, catch it, and you slice her straight through um, the stomach. And, like, a lot of blood spills out, uh, and she kind of looks up at you in, in like, abject terror and uh, collapses on the ground. <laughs> and then the, th- the thugs look down and see their patron dead, and they put their hands on their heads. They throw their weapons to the ground and put their hands on their heads. She stares at her sister crumpled on the ground. She kicks her over until she falls on her back, puts her healed spike on her chest where her heart is, and says, I am best, not you, and just stomps down, crushes her heart under her heel. Yeah, there's like a, a low hiss that comes out of her uh, out of her mouth. Uh, and then she kind of like, like goes up to grip your foot, slips a little that like gets blood on your on your boot, 
and then her arms fall limp, and her head rolls to one side. And that just means, I am Soifunji, and Soifunji has done this. Alright, so Soifunji is just kind of standing there, twitching and shaking, and then she just kind of looks up and starts laughing. (laughs) And then her laugh slowly, like, turned into just, like, sobbing tears. And she's just like, "Ah!" (laughs) And then she just, like, falls to her knees next to her sister's body and just kind of looking at it and crying and laughing a little bit at the same time, but still crying. And in the midst of, like, whatever she's, like, going on with her right now, she's just, like, also at the same time trying to, like, search her body um, for um, the information that she was trying to find from her. Uh yeah, you you find like her her VIP card for the uh the club. You find her agent which just which has um a like a 3 second timer. Um and as soon as you like go to like unlock it, uh the timer counts down to 0 and the phone like or and the agent just wipes itself clean. And, uh, I mean, there's her pistol, uh, lying on the ground at her side. That's all that's on her person. So, so all the information's lost, basically? I wouldn't say that. It's not on her person. Okay, so, um, in a angry fit of not understanding quite what just happened, um, Sofuji just kind of, like, stands up, like, picks up her sister's body by the head and just throws it at the wall and then, um, just starts, like, making her way, I guess, towards the VIP area uh, with her VIP card to see if she can find anything in there. Okay. Uh, yeah, you'll run into, uh, Candor, who kind of just, um, she, like, she's got, like, a slack-jaw expression on her face. And when you walk past her, just kind of like backs away, because um, you're—I mean—you're covered in bl- in your sister's blood, um, and you're kind of, I think, still just like cackling, crying to yourself. Uh, and she doesn't want any part of that right now. And uh, yeah, Oslo's Oslo's crew just—you know—they're not—they're not touching you. They've got their guns trained on the, um, on the bar th- the bar thugs. And, uh, yeah, you can walk upstairs and are met by, uh, Saul and Abel. All right. Well, that was, and... that was fucking graphic. What are all the guards doing right now? Are they all hands up waiting for instructions or what? And then what are Oslo's folks doing? Um, Oslo's folks just have them, have them kind of like, you know, trained just any sudden movements and, you know they'll they'll shoot them again uh the the guards look like they're just kind of they're just waiting for for whatever you know is going is going to happen okay um all right so from g is just kind of like staring at the vip card and like just shaking and still laughing and crying but not really acknowledging Abel or Saul because she's kind of still in her own little deranged world right now um and uh I don't know if I'll get any penny penalties for this since I'm currently in cyber psychosis uh but can I do like a um I guess a perception check to see if there's anything in the VIP area that this um VIP card or whatever might work on um I mean the the VIP like card looks like it it scans the on the outside of this alcove and if you scan it the like not a paper door but a reinforced steel door will shut um inside of the VIP lounge are just uh some mostly full drinks that that Abel didn't grab um a couple of agents that were left there It's not my real fucking uh, from job her entourage and like a purse containing, you know, just some uh 
some recreational drugs. Okay. Um, does the purse belong to Mikaze? It, it doesn't go with her outfit. Okay, so it's not hers. Um, okay. Um, so from G just kind of looks around for a second and then just sits yeah. down in the in your, VIP area. In your head, you, you suddenly think about uh, during the fight, you remember seeing Abel poking around up here and you get like this dark thought in your head that she's like keeping something from you. Okay, so Serfran, she turns and looks at Abel and says, what do you know? Where is it? Gets up and just kind of like walks towards Abel and grabs her shoulders and is just like screaming in Abel's face. Where is it? Where is it? Oh, hey, hey, Soy Fung, calm uh, down there. Okay, whoa, 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 Agent, I know you were up here, and I know you found something. Where is it, or I'll kill you too? Where yeah, is okay. it? Oh, you no, don't, 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 don't hey, hey, soy fungi, so, draw. Saul, so, Saul, so, Saul, so, can you get, can you get candor? Uh, uh, soy fungi, and I'm, I'm gonna start patting myself down, um, for the the file. Yeah, I mean, it's it's kind of like unnerving having. Uh, someone you would consider a friend yelling at you uh, and threatening violence, but ev- eventually, like, you remember <laughs> it's in your front pocket uh, and you, you can pull it out. Yeah, and I just have the thought that, man, I really should pick a different spot for this if I'm going to be shot at, like, while I'm grabbing it. <laughs> Saul will, like, yell over his shoulder to Kander, but he's also so. You know, he has pretty good trigger discipline since he's an all-weapons dealer, even though he's goofy as shit. You see him... I th- I don't know if you're... Cy- I think because your cyberpsychosis has you in such your mind, Soy Fungi, he's not going to flag you, like, with the gun. Like, he's not pointing it at you. But he definitely has... He's moved his finger from, like, above the trigger, above the trigger to, like, right on the trigger guard. And you see him, like, shift his body just slightly so that if he needs to pull up, he will. Okay, so in response to your sudden movement, um, I kind of just, like, push past um, Abel, and I go I go for a punch to just, like, strike at Saul, but then all of a sudden, I just freeze, like, right as he's about to, like, punch you, and... I just, like, frozen for a second, and then I just kind of stop, and I'm, like, screaming and crying, and I just grab my head, and I, like, stumble back a little bit, uh, and then I just kind of just, like, fall to the ground and pass out. Oh. Oh. So, so, so Soi Fungi passes out, um, the... Uh, the guards are, or the thugs, the the bar um, security, uh, are going to, like, under kind of the duress of Oslo's crew, just kind of pick up the body of Maikaze and, like, move it to a vehicle out, parked outside. Uh, and, and, you know, they're just, they do it slowly and, and carefully as to, you know, not not get themselves shot. Fuck, uh, fuck! Wait, under Oslo, what? What is? What, Saul's gonna what yell. Are you doing? Saul's gonna yell. She could have a chip. And he goes, "A what? I'm I'm sorry. I did. It's just this body's dead. You know, like Fli- it's got to go back to whoever it. Look, man, flip her over. Just just flip her over. Check check near the base for her fucking skull. Uh, and he he does, and he's like, I don't see anything. You guys are. Being weird, uh, wait. Saul's gonna, like, dash down there, get his fucking whatever he can. He's just gonna let loose a whole clip in the back of Mikazi's neck and the head. Okay. Oh. Just. Yeah, you do that. Fuck. And afterwards, like, you can see he's visibly, like, kind of, like, shaking from it. And uh, just from the surprise factor, and he just. He'll kind of look, behind, like, past, like, the, the crazed and disbelieving eyes of probably 
um, Oslo and the rest of the Oslo's crew. I, that's a sentence I never thought I would say. Uh, <laughs> just to Abel and be like, we we can't take any chances. She's Sahara. We don't. It's all, it's all we're Sahara. Well, we were. I know, but if we don't know, who, we don't know who that who she could have been before. It doesn't matter if she tried to kill any of us. We can't let her come back. I don't like that. I don't like that at all. I don't like it either, but we got something going on with Soy Fungi, and I don't know if that that lead to us somehow tied to, to whatever the hell happened to Soy Fungi just a minute ago. I told I told you. Out of all of us, I'm not letting you die. I, I'm, she's so, she's not coming back to hurt anybody, okay? Well, obviously, she's fucking not coming back. But then you also just demonstrated in front of these people. I'm saying this very, very low. The exact way we expect to be killed. <sighs> yeah. And Saul doesn't have an answer for that. He just reacted. So. Um, but we we need to make sure Sifon G is safe. Because I don't know. Uh, I'm not big on corporate takeovers, but I know they're pretty fucking bloody. Yeah, I I, I totally agree with you. Um, let's get candor. And let's let's get Soy Fungi back to some place we can, I don't know, treat her. I I don't even know what the fuck to do here. Like if this was like a bullet wound, it, it would be one thing. But this is something with her her brain, right? Yeah, yeah. Get Candor. Make sure she's okay too. Hey, Candor, and Saul will try to find Candor wherever the hell she is. Yeah, she she kind of hasn't moved. Um, she's. <laughs> Got still like a mouth open expression, kind of uh, tears in her eyes um, as uh, she just watched you unload on this dead woman. Um, and she's just like, what is going on? Are you guys OK? Um, well, we'll be all fine, but there's something going on with Soy Fungi. Um, she says she said a while back that she has like some cyber thing going on. Like some cyber sickness? Do you, have you ever heard about that? Oh my god! Yeah, I mean it's every it's every netrunner's bane. She um, she just freaked out up there and like shorted out. I it, it, do you do you know anybody who's like a I, I don't know a netrunner doctor or something? Do you, do you think her you know the the guy she's been seeing would be able to help out? I I wouldn't. The the thing about thing about cyberpsychosis and she's kind of like saying that word under her breath she's like it's not people go missing if they are perceived at cyberpsychosis i don't know how well you guys trust emir i know soifeng g has a thing with him but this is the sort of shit they're supposed to report even criminals like him and the way I see it, she's got two options. She can either continue to live this way and, you know, risk becoming deranged and killing us, or she needs that shit out of her. We're we're working on it. Alright. All all this sh- uh, I'm gonna look at um Candor real quick and just say what exactly out of her. There's she's got too much of the, the cybernetics the, they're, the brain is only supposed to handle you know a finite amount and I I didn't look like she was I've seen people who are more cybered out than that I don't know what is in her that's affecting her this bad but it's gotta come out I- alright well we need to get some more safe so we can figure out what the fuck to do and the best bet's to do it while she's incapacitated right now. Because I don't want to deal with that when she wakes up. We're working on making her better. We're working on making all of us better. Okay, Kinder? Like, Are you guys going to roid out on me like that, too? No. No. You're never going through something like this again. Okay? Like, this is the last time you see something like this. Uh, especially with any of us. The next time, um... We're gonna get the 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 D 
demon deck or whatever the, the hell that Soyfungi was talking about, that information stuff. And as soon as, as you and Soy have it, that's it. You're not coming on any other things with us because that'll pretty much be the end of our adventures. All right? It's just easy sailing also, from there on out. As soon as you mention that, Saul, Abel's going to race back up to Soyfungi and um, get the the file back from her. Okay. So I'll just gotta like in that time kinda like try as gently as he can explain to Candor that like the three of us are in danger from Sahara uh, without any getting into specifics, just like we're in danger from Sahara and within the next like two weeks we're gonna settle whatever debts we have and then we won't have to live like this ever again. Or live this way anymore. Um yeah, and she's kinda just gonna not like nod just i i don't i think you can you can perceive that she's just like responding to your words um you can't tell that they've actually like gotten into her brain um or that she's perceiving them in the way that you are relaying them mm. that makes sense yeah no that makes heard sense. but not understood she, she's kind of in shock right now i'm assuming too so yeah and you know, teenagers have that uh have that innate ability to disassociate um, as quick as possible. <laughs> yeah, not listen not hear a word you say. <laughs> yeah. Um I guess after that, uh Saul will go up and try to help um you know, Abel scoop up Soy Fine G. Uh Oslo's like at the door uh when you guys go to leave. Um and he goes, uh I, it was nice to meet you, James. I guess um, if there's anything you guys need, you know, you can always lean on old Oslo. Uh, I feel bad about the way things went down um, in our last uh, escapade here, and uh, oh. since since I've since I've gotten or recovered, I'm in a better situation. No, man. Like everything you did was was kick ass man like you definitely had our backs and i appreciate it especially for meeting us strangers here i think uh i don't know you must know these guys but you know i really appreciate everything you did yep uh well what is your situation now oslo cuz <laughs> he goes oh you guys haven't read my blog jesus fucking christ so this guy <laughs> So basically, I mean, I, I won't get all into it. I mean, you know, you guys don't want to hear this this tale. You can read it about it on my blog. It's it's pretty extensive. But the the long and short of it is, I, I woke up in the hospital without any hands, uh, and they told me that my insurance wasn't going to cover it. Uh, something about being expired. I don't know. I wasn't really paying attention. Um, I had just lost my hands, and. Then, like, two days afterwards, uh, you know, I'm in a, in a bar uh, drinking, wallowing in my self-pity. It wasn't the Longshoreman. Kate doesn't let me back there. Um, but it, in in my drunken stupor, I kind of let loose that uh, the reason why I lost my hands was because I was, like, you know, in a in a firefight with the Donatis and, like, helped raid their their casino and steal a bunch of shit from them and uh these 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 cats uh the chimbadas you know they just happen to be passing through town you know getting some getting some drinks they're kind of like a rival gang of the donatis but it, in like a in like a old school sense where you know they got a lot of respect for each other and anyway so you know they they thought it was badass that i i took on the donatis and and lived to tell about it and so you know for some like informa information i shared about the inside of their look their casino and all that shit like i got new hands and you know it's just been like one mission after another just kind of a long haul really uh but you know i've i've kind of worked my way up through the ranks and uh you know now i'm a capo and and i've got my own crew um and we're with you know what are they called the chimbadas come on keep up uh geez abel anyway so yeah that this we're we're not going to be sticking around in Pilates long term uh the plan is to go back down uh go back up to south america and do some do some work there but you know we're just 
we're here for the moment. We happen to come come to this bar because we heard there's like a lot of uh, you know gangsters and big time mob bosses, and I want to kind of rub elbows with the greats. Uh, and I saw you guys there, and then I saw like so if I G like attack uh, some chick who apparently is her sister. And then they started like going at it hardcore and I was like, oh my God, you guys are in danger. So I thought I'd help and like, you know, me and the Chumbadas roll up and, and we take out a, when we take out a boy, we take out a boy. You know what I'm saying? All right, I'll catch you guys later. <laughs> and he just like strolls off into like a very loud like streetcar that's been tricked out with like all sorts of... um like Latin decals, uh, and like uh, hops into the passenger seat, uh, smacks the roof, and he's like, "Vamanos, brothers, let's go!" Uh, and and they drive off. Who the fuck was that? I, I I hated every minute of that. Every minute of that was absolute torture. He has a fucking blog, and Abel's just like running her hands through her hair, just ears red pissed off uh, i guess us like getting his hands fucking chopped up was like the greatest thing that ever happened to him if it's a fucking vlog like if he just called a blog a vlog and he's vlogging because he how can he type how can how can, uh, uh. um okay and Saul will i don't know I, are there any vehicles around in the parking lot i'm assuming there's probably some from like the people we may have inadvertently murdered. Oh yeah, there's definitely like a bunch of very like upscale um vehicles. Now if they've got contraband in them, you will not know. Oh yeah, uh, no, that's fine. <laughs> I think I think actually what Saul will do is he has an idea and he'll pat like Soifenji's pockets and try to find the keys for uh Mikaze's car. Yeah, she's got like a um She's kind of got like a the the future equivalent of like a Ford Focus, so it's like okay. it it's got some it's got some get up get up and go um in the engine, uh but it's like a nice um kind of like black with purple uh like under lighting. Oh yeah, Saul will definitely like he knows how much it means to Soifanji to take anything that her sister owns and loves and just steal it. So he will go ahead and, you know, try to shoulder, um, with the help of Abel, shoulder Soifungi's body into the back seat, And, yeah, so we'll drive away in that, especially considering there's probably some, like, special passes and stuff to get into specialty um, Sahara parking in the car. Yeah. She's driving a fucking Ford Focus. You know, it's it's the f- futuristic equivalent. I just meant that it was like a it was like a compact that's like n- not designed for racing, but notorious for racing. How if I explain, this, how do- <laughs> yeah, I'm just like give me a Bugatti. Come on, I this is the weirdest night I've probably ever fucking had, and I've had a lot of weird fucking nights, man. Like with alien abduction scenarios and like uh, just. I guess now drug riddled fucking memory relapse and re- recognition, but this is probably taking the fucking cake. How the hell did Oslo get a fucking crew? And so I will say that as he like starts on the car, he just stops talking. Yeah. Abel's going to get in the passenger seat. And just, uh, you know what the worst part is though? Saul? Uh, what? I kind of miss that burrito maker. Oh, oh god this this night just got like five times more weird man i know oh. but he has like he has a blog oh he has a fucking crew candor candor's like on on her agent she goes up oh, i found it wow he's got a lot of followers oh. <laughs> so it's gonna groan really loudly as he just like starts on the car and just starts fucking driving and she she's like yeah. scrolling through it and she's like I would this would not be the picture I would choose it's very I mean he's getting a lot of breeze through that uh, <laughs> I think we all like, internally start screaming all at the same time you can just hear the car reverberate with like the fucking groans and screams of all of us oh look 
he d- he has a <laughs> he has a gallery where he's uploaded pictures of himself to be used in uh like nudie calendars. Check this one out, Saul. <laughs> oh, he, he, Saul is getting ready to puke while driving. It's probably not a good idea. <laughs> It seems that Candor like has has kind of like internalized everything that just happened and is coping with it by making you guys uh, puke. <laughs> yes, yes, she's that's good uh, as most teenagers do. Oh, yeah. Oh boy! Holy fuck! How the fuck did that motherfucker get a? Cr- oh god! I hate it. <laughs>